What's up everyone, Sergeant Erdrich here, and today we're going to be reacting to the Wehrmacht War Crimes. So yeah, that should be interesting from Military, military History Visualized. Very, very nice YouTube channel. One of my favorites, at least when it comes to history in World War II. But, yeah, Wehrmacht, um, yeah, they, they did a lot of war crimes, as you can you probably know. Today we're going to get more in-depth. So, without further ado, let's get started. To talk about Wehrmacht... It's about time to talk about Wehrmacht war crimes in the Second World War. This is quite an extensive, complicated and highly charged topic. As such, I will rely heavily on quotes from experts. Especially since this is clearly not my area of expertise. Since we are talking about the crimes of the Wehrmacht, it is of course important to know the basics, namely what the Wehrmacht was and what it was not. First, the Wehrmacht was the official German armed forces in the Second World War, mm. yet there were various other military and paramilitary organizations. Yeah. That were I think I know where they're going with this. So, I think they're going to talk about how the SS, like, to, um, because they were separate from the Wehrmacht, I'm pretty sure that, because the SS, they did, they were fanatics, they did a lot of crazy stuff and war crimes. Uh, so I think they're going to make a distinction between the Wehrmacht war crimes and the SS war crimes. Not part of the Wehrmacht, yet were engaged in combat, like the Reichsarbeitsdienst, the Reich Labor Service, the Volkssturm, the police, and the Waffen-SS. Yeah. Second, the Wehrmacht had three branches, the Army, hmm. Das Heer, the Air Force, the Luftwaffe, and the Navy, Kriegsmarine. That is interesting. To be honest, I just thought the Wehrmacht was just the army itself. I didn't know it was all three of those. This is also an order of importance, whereas the army was clearly the most... So, Wehrmacht is more like the military rather than the army. Uh, that's that's interesting. Like to a lot of you, it probably sounds pretty obvious, but you know, I don't know. Like just it's it seemed like it would mean you know interesting. Most important branch of the Wehrmacht. The next definition is about war crimes. For this video, I use three crimes of the four used by the Nuremberg trials. Second, war crimes violation. What about the fourth one? Violation of the laws and customs of war including murder and maltreatment of the civilian population in occupied territories, maltreatment of prisoners of war, killing of hostages, looting of private property, and the indiscriminate destruction of towns and places that has no military justification. Third, crimes against humanity. These include murder, enslavement, deportation, and the annihilation of civilians. Yeah, that's usually not very good. Four, secret agreements which led to the above-mentioned crimes. Now a general overview of the different types of war crimes committed by the different branches. Note that this list is not complete. I wonder if the Kriegsmarine did any war crimes. Oh. Wait a minute. Does like, what they did with their submarines, does, is that war crimes? Ah, oh my gosh, I don't really know about the German Navy, the Kriegsmarine. I haven't really studied it. I don't know if they did what they did in World War One, where they just, like, sank everything for a while. But of course they did stop, and then they did it again later on. You know, I wonder if, you know, they did that in World War Two. They probably did. But, yeah. It should contain the most crucial crimes and also lesser known ones as well, which in some cases also might overlap or could be considered subtypes. Also keep in mind that both the Luftwaffe and Kriegsmarine had ground units at certain points in the war. As such, various activities that might at first glance only be attributed to the army could be conducted by the other branches as well. Mm. The types are as follows. Mistreatment and large-scale killing of prisoners of war on the Eastern Front. Yeah, that's a pretty big one. <laughs> oh, goodness. Active participation and support of the Holocaust. That's also a pretty big one. Oh gosh. 
Anti-partisan warfare? Yes, definitely. Here sometimes no prisoners were taken and or civilians killed as retributions. Executions. For yes. instance, the infamous Commissar Order, which instructed German troops to summarily execute commissars of the Red Army. Oh, but this wow. part That's also rude. included other executions as well. For instance, those conducted out of revenge. Requesting SS units for the execution of the Jewish population in the occupied area. Rude? Why would you do that? It's rude. Come on, Germany, why would you do that? It's Passing on illegal orders and or giving ambiguous orders that allowed and or led to war crimes. Economic mm. exploitation discovers both ordered and organized looting. It also non-sectioned actions of individuals that in some cases also were severely punished. Forced labor. Many divisions on the Eastern Front had sought personnel that helped out. Some of them oh. voluntary, some of them not. Deportation yeah. of civilians. Destruction of civilian property as part of scorched earth policy and other reasons. Oh my god, this is getting to a long list. Establishment of a military brothel system with non-voluntary prostitutes that were either forced or deceived with false promises. Jeez. Hypothermia experiments conducted on prisons of war by the Luftwaffe. What? I've never heard about that before. Jeez, that seems... That, that doesn't seem very nice. That seems pretty rude. This is incomplete, guys. This is incomplete. Handing over prisoners of war to the SD, there was the intelligence agency of the SS to be executed. We will now look at three topics of that list. Oh yeah, hold on. Before we get into this, also, just a reminder to subscribe to my channel because, um, I have, you know, maybe like only twenty percent of you. Last time I checked that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So literally, like, if all of you that watch my videos subscribed, I would have, like, over a thousand subscribers immediately. And then I would be able to monetize my videos, and then I would... You know, that would just... Yeah. Actually, I don't think that's how math works. That wouldn't make any sense. That would... <laughs> okay, just, ig just ignore my bad math, please. Okay, let's just continue. This is getting weird. That are in terms of impact, probably the most important by far. First, maybe the most striking and educational aspect when it comes to German war crimes is the treatment of prisoners of war. Because oh, it clearly yeah. shows a huge discrepancy between the Western and Eastern. Oh, my, I keep having to move Additionally, my thing. in terms of numbers, it is highly significant. Mm -hmm. Let us start with some numbers here. Serious German and Russian researchers assume that between 5.3 and 6 million South military personnel became Why? Wehrmacht prisoners. Hey. For the Western Allies, the number was about 230,000. What is wrong with this? Okay, I'm literally so confused why my computer is doing this. What the heck? Like, it took like 30 seconds just to get out of full screen. And I'm using this performance. Uh. And also, I was just saying, like, I have to keep moving my, like, person, my thing around, if y'all can even see it. Around and around, because it keeps... Because it keeps showing stuff, and I have to move it to where there is no stuff. But anyways, let's, let's... Whoa! Look at, okay. Look at these numbers! Like, 6 million compared to 230,000. Also, why is there such a huge disparity of 700,000? Or, like, why is there such a huge difference between those numbers? Like, that's a, that's a pretty big number that you don't know about. <laughs> Seriously. Also, it's so interesting how, like, all of this is written in German, right? All of this in the red. And that only translates to, like, one and a half line. In English. Of these Western prisoners of war, around 8,348 died. Note that the exact huh. numbers are debated here, but for comparison. That doesn't seem like too many. Like, obviously, more than one. Like, even one is bad, but. Well, it's a pretty good ratio, I guess. With the Eastern Front, this is less of an issue. Still, Australian can. What about Soviet POWs who died in. 
captivity. Canadian, British, and American figures on this vary considerably, but all show the same trend, resulting in a death rate of around 3%. So assuming oh. 3% of 430,000 would be 6,900 men. As such, we keep the higher number of 8,348, which is 3.6%. Oh. Yet when it comes to the Soviet prisoners of war, the number is in the millions. Oh, wait, as what? a result of catastrophic living and working conditions, as well as targeted killings by the Wehrmacht, Gestapo and SS, at least 2.5 million, possibly up to 3.3 million, died. Soviet prisoners of war are thus the largest group of victims of the National Socialist Extermination Policy after the European Jews. That is a lot of people. Wow. Also, again, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentences, like seven lines is like three lines in English. So, so funny to me. Since we have a range of numbers here, let us do a short recap. For the Western Allies, we have a total of 250,000 prisoners of war. For the Soviets, we have a minimum of 5.3 million and a maximum of 6 million. In terms of deaths in captivity, we have about 8,400 for the Western Allies and a minimum of 2.5 million for the Soviets and a maximum of 3.3 million. It's like literally half. Half! If you were captured, you had a 50% chance of living. That is crazy. When we look at the death ratio for the Western Allies, it is about 3.6%. Oh, I can move it again. For the Soviets, we have a range of values. So let us start with those that produce the lowest ratio, which would be 6 million prisoners of war and 2.5 million dead. This would mean a death ratio of a staggering 42%. Jeez. And if we take 5.3 million prisoners of war and 3.3 million dead, we have a more staggering death ratio of 60 Whoa. Whoa. Even with the lowest number, 42%, the death ratio for the Soviet prisoners of war was more than 11-fold than those of the Western Allies. Jeez. Whereas the highest number is more than 17 times the ratio of the Western Allies. 17 times. To put this in contrast with another Axis bar, most of you might know that the Japanese in the Pacific Oh yeah, the Japanese start, also did a lot of war crimes. Particularly well known for treating prisoners of war properly. Be very diplomatic. Nice, badly in quotes. Yet even the Japanese, compared to the Germans on the Eastern Front, have a better track record. The terrible maltreatment of Allied <laughs> prisoners of war at the hands of the Japanese in the Second World War is often compared with the much more favorable behavior of the Germans to their prisoners of war, excluding, of course, the Russians. Indeed, 27% of the Anglo American prisoners of war had by the. Jeez. Japanese forces died while in captivity, compared with only 4% of those held by German forces. Furthermore, all months also looked at Poland, Denmark, Norway. Well, to be fair, you know, Japan never went to war with Russia or the Soviet Union. Well, I, they did, actually, and they had border conflicts as well. The, the, the actual war didn't happen until Japan was almost already defeated in 1945, after they were already nuked. Norway, France, Netherlands, Belgium, Yugoslavia, Greece. Yugoslavia? That's interesting. The United Kingdom and the United States. He notes, if one compares these figures I have to move again. of the aforementioned groups of prisoners of war, which generally did not exceed 5% mark, becomes drastically apparent how much worse off the Soviet prisoners of war were in German custody. Needless to say, such rates cannot be explained by negligence, shorter logistics, or the hardness of the fighting on the Eastern Front. Additionally, yeah. this was not the only major discrepancy. For instance, when it came to sex crimes committed by the Wehrmacht members, these were dealt with very differently as well. Streit noted about the causes of death for Soviet prisoners. Five major causes led to the deaths of more than half of Soviet prisoners. Hunger, completely inadequate housing, the method of deportation, especially in 1941, inhuman treatment, and finally, the murder of certain groups of prisoners. 
Bartov lists various reasons that explain the inhuman behavior on the Eastern Front, yet notes that most direct causes came from the top. The most direct oh, cause for the criminal yeah. activities of the German army in the East and the resulting brutalizing effect that they had on the individual soldier, however, were the so-called criminal orders. This complex of commands issued by the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht and Oberkommando des Heeres on the eve of the invasion of Russia determined to a large extent the brutal conduct of the troops at the front by providing them with a pseudo-legal and disciplinary framework. Mm. This seems also in line with Osterloh's view that particularly notes a continuation within the Wehrmacht and especially army policy that conformed to NS ideology. The military leadership made itself an aid to nationalist socialist politics here. From the very beginning, the Wehrmacht High Command and the Army High Command established a hierarchy of different rights and legal security among the prisoners of the various enemy states. The Wehrmacht deliberately violated the provisions of the Geneva Convention in its actions. Rude. The decisive criterion for the treatment of prisoners was their position in the nationalist socialist racial hierarchy. But possible reprisals against German soldiers in enemy hands also played an important role. It is also important to note here that there was a shift in treatment of the prisoners of war and yeah. other aspects as well. Oh, well, I'm assuming they're going to talk about how, like, maybe they were more harsh near the end of the war because they wanted to kill all of them off before they were captured or something like that. It is very well outlined but tougher in regard to the planning of Operation Citadel. In fact, the shortage of labor began to play a crucial role even in the military operational planning. Whilst in 1941-1942, two million over prisoners of war had been starved to death, it was an explicit objective of the German summer offensive in 1943 to capture as many soldiers of the Red Army as possible so they could be used for forced labor. This is very important to keep in mind that at various points and at various different levels there were changes. But Let's read this again. In fact, shortage of labor began to play a crucial role in the military operation. Hmm. That's interesting. For instance, there were protests against the Commissar Order. This order meant the captured Soviet Commissars were ex and not treated as regular prisoners. Protests were mainly motivated by the fact that the Soviet resistance stiffened once this became known. Similarly, Rutherford notes, military necessity should not be understood as a rigid concept. However, at its essence, it meant that the German army would do whatever was necessary to preserve its combat efficiency and emerge victorious on the battlefield. Thus, how to achieve victory could that's interesting. It doesn't have like the, it doesn't have the red line, and then it has it in German. Be yeah, understood, but yes, you don't have enough room. Various units in different ways. The element that there were various views on how victory could be achieved is very important here, as already outlined in my video about the German blunders regarding Operation Barbarossa. Some of the German atrocities. Yeah, that was a pretty good video. The integral part of Nazi ideology. I think I remember reacting to it. For the Nazis, the Jews were the real enemy, and the annihilation as such a main objective. And so Operation Barbarossa contained inherent genocidal aspects. Yeah, like this is the this is pretty much like their hierarchy of you know race. They have like the um, Northern Europeans, the Scandinavians, you know, the the British Isles people, or the Germans up here. And then they have like the, the um the Latin people, like the French. Oh no. It's interesting because like Hitler liked the northern French better than the southern French, I think I remember. It's really interesting. So then the northern Latin Europeans. And then there's the, you know, southern Latin Europeans and so on. And then all the way at the bottom, it's Slavs, and then right at the very bottom is Jews. Which are, to a certain degree, reflected by the huge death radio among the prisoners, but simply not limited to them. 
with the transition of the SS and police formations to total genocide between mid-August and the beginning of October wow. 1941, the constellation changed somewhat. On the one hand, military administration participated in many cases in the preparation of the massacres. But on the sectors. When was this video made? Oh wow, it was made in 2020. I don't know, I just... Like, I'm not trying to make fun of him, but I just... You know, I think it's funny the way he pronounces some stuff. Like, Yugoslavia and Massacres. On the other hand, a few critical voices were now also heard, such as the protests of the commander of the rear of Army Group mm. North and the events in Borisov or Bilyatsyavka. This was an escalation that... How can he pronounce that? But he can't pronounce massacres. <laughs> like, I, I, don't, I can't pronounce that, whatever that is. Sir Kava. Was that what he said? Preparation of the massacres. But on the other hand, a few critical voices were now also heard, such as the protests of the command of the rear of Army Group North and the events in Borisov or Bilyatsyavka. Oh yeah, I pronounced that wrong. This was an escalation that only changed the relationship between the Wehrmacht and the SS. However, institutional cooperation in the murder of the Jews remained unchanged, both by the wow. units in the rear and by security formations under civilian administration. The field and local commandant's office were often involved in the planning of the massacres. The quartermaster general supplied ammunition for the SS and police formations. Units provided trucks to transport the victims. In some cases, soldiers participated as shooters, and occasionally pioneers blew up the edges of open mass graves to cover up the crimes. Well, it's actually interesting. Like, there's a case to be made about, like, if Germany didn't participate in the Holocaust, and with what it did in the Eastern Front, all those massacres, or massacres, I mean, uh, but, like, I wonder how much better Germany would have done. Because it's it's really interesting what happened on the Eastern Front. Like, the Germans, they would come in, they would take a bunch of land, and then, you know, the Ukrainians, the Baltic people, they would celebrate them. They're like, yay, you're liberating us, woohoo! And then they found out the Germans were just as bad, if not even worse, than the Soviets were. So then, it, it was like Ukrainians fighting other Ukrainians. You know, some on the German side, some on the Soviet side. It's and it's really interesting. And just, you know, it makes me wonder what would have happened if they didn't do all of that. Or at least waited until after the freaking war. Like, I don't know why Germany decided to do the Holocaust during the war. Like, just if you... It's like Germany was so in the axis. It was so... Like, they thought they were going to win so much. That they didn't even consider the possibility of losing. Because seriously, if they didn't do the Holocaust and all of that, it, it would have had a huge impact. Maybe they, they would have still probably lost, to be honest. But th there wouldn't be all of this stuff that was happening behind the lines. All this resistance. It would be a lot easier. Because, yeah, it's just, like, come on, Germany. Germany is a donkey. Seriously, they're just massac um, massacring people. It's not cool. I don't agree. Finally, Wehrmacht authorities arrested countless Jews who had fled and handed them over to the murderers. Jürgen Förster summarizes the role of the Wehrmacht in the Holocaust as follows. With regard to the Holocaust, the Wehrmacht acted in various roles. It was perpetrator, helper, confident, and spectator. This by no means excludes Discomfort, contradiction, even resistance. The next major war crime was how the Wehrmacht conducted its anti-partisan warfare. Oh, Here again, gosh. we look at the Eastern Front, especially since the overall dimension is sometimes lost due to the sheer mass that can prevent a more personalized connection. Ordur in France and Lidice in Bohemia and Moravia became memorials because they were unique exemplars of German brutality in Western Central Europe. By liberation, hmm. Belarusia could count over 600 villages destroyed wow. and their populations massacred. For the Germans, the Eastern Front, the Ost Front, 
who since 1941 always the main theater of war. And as the death ratios of prisoners of war clearly showed, it was approached far more brutally. Generally, Pakistan warfare is even more prone to war crimes, even if both sides try to minimize losses. Yeah. But this was not the case at all here. It is a basic problem of every guerrilla warfare that it levels the differences between combatants and non-combatants. In the case of the German Soviet War, both sides worked toward this from the very beginning. The social consequences that this had to have for the opposing party as well as for one's own party played no discernible role for either Hitler nor Stalin. For the German leadership, of course, the collateral damage of Korea War was not only a Korea War necessary evil. Since Hitler and his advisors wanted to suppress, decimate, or completely exterminate Soviet society anyway, they saw a guerrilla war as an opportunity. As Hitler also admitted bluntly in the directive setting meeting of July 16, 1941. Hmm. Hartmann continues, but yeah, that's the that's the thing because. Like, the fact that they treat the Soviets so badly is just going to make them not want to surrender. It's going to make them want to fight harder, especially behind the lines, and try to do everything they can. Because the, cause in their minds, you know, they think, well, we're going to get exterminated anyway. Might as well go down fighting. Planning the overall dimension in terms of losses by both sides. Belarus alone, the undistributed center of guerrilla warfare, is said to have lost 345,000 people to it. In the entire Soviet Union, it was probably about 500,000 people. If, on the other hand, the losses of the German occupying forces and the allies in guerrilla warfare can be estimated at about one-tenth, then this ratio alone shows how the behavior of the two sides is to be assessed and also their guilt. If you look at these crimes, it becomes rather apparent that some clearly originated at the very top, whereas others are less clear-cut and could originate at the bottom. This brings us to the problem of the macro and micro level. Yeah. As pointed out by Rafa Ford, who studied three German infantry divisions and their behavior on the Eastern Front, he notes, not each division engaged in each component of a Nichtungskrieg war extermination, and each division approached these issues with a varying degrees of professional comportment, ideological intensity, and situational awareness. In other words, the master narrative that used the Wehrmacht as a willing tool in Nazi attempts to destroy Soviet state and society in preparation for German colonization, that certainly holds true on the macro level, needs to be looked at more closely on the micro level. Yet even looking at the divisional level might not be enough. As Peter Lieb noted in a review about a specific division that one regiment in particular committed the most crimes, and of that regiment a particular battalion, which just shows the further one goes down, the more complicated the situation becomes. To summarize, it is rather apparent that the Wehrmacht as an organization, specifically at the very top, and with its high-ranking commanders, give orders that were clearly criminal and immoral, also by the standards of the time. The Wehrmacht as an institution was largely integrated into the ruling system of national socialism by mid-1940 at the latest. A widespread consensus among... Oh look, it's actually in the German Empire flag, black, white, red. The commanders and large sections of the officer corps that mass violence against civilians was necessary in the Eastern campaign lowered the moral threshold compared to earlier wars and campaigns. The development over time was not entirely straightforward, yet there was no major change in direction. If the first mass murders were still carried out under the premise that the campaign had to be ended soon with a maximum use of force, limited criticism of total extermination of the Jews was voiced. In the meantime, but with flaring up of partisan war, the inhibitions fell again. After some time, the necessity of radical action against innocent civilians was also debated, not least under the impression that the war would be increasingly difficult to win. Yeah. 
Frank, you're here oh, to okay, end I was confused. Military... I thought he was like paused or something. Anyways, so there we go. Now we know about the Vim. My cat wants to go inside, of course. Now we know about the German war crimes, the Wehrmacht war crimes more specifically. Definitely cleared up, you know, a lot of things. Um, ah, this was made just a few months ago. Interesting. Um, yeah, so, you know, make, make, sure, to, make sure to check this channel out. It's, it's definitely really good. I'm gonna subscribe right now. You know, um, I don't even know why I'm not subscribed. I've I watched them for a long time. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hello everyone, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. And you know, turn on the notification bell thingy. And if you didn't, then make sure to leave a uh, thumbs down. Oh yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. And while you're at it, go ahead and watch my other videos. They're probably just as good and if not better than this one right now except for my oldest videos don't watch those and you know subscribe to these people down here my fellow sergeants they're other youtubers that i either know or i have high in high regards yeah even my cat agrees so thank you for watching and have a great day